Hi there, it's Mr. Warren, and I want to run through a little bit of stuff here about what's called the ideal gas law. We're going to start with some basics. So if you can picture a flask that's got a stopper in it, um, hopefully you can imagine that there's some number of moles of air in that flask. Now let's think about the flask. Um, now it's made of glass, um, and is the volume of that flask liable to change? The answer is probably no. So volume's not going to change. But let's say that um, I was able to, without getting the stopper out, I was able to get more gas in here. So you know, there's some number of moles in here to start with. If I were able to put more molecules of gas into the flask, um, the number of moles of gas would increase. Now what do you think would happen to the pressure in the flask as the number of moles of gas increased? Ponder that. Now think about a balloon. All right, so this balloon, if it's inflated with air, um, has some number of moles of air in it. In the same way that the flask, that the different difference is that the balloon can change in volume. Um, so in this case, we think about pressure staying constant, um, but what's going to happen to the volume as we increase the number of moles of air in the balloon? Now. I think that you probably have a couple of thoughts um, in both of those cases, and I would guess that um, if your thinking cap is on, that from the pressure standpoint, if volume doesn't change in the flask, that if you increased the number of moles, that the pressure would also increase. And in the case of the balloon, if you increase the number of moles of gas in there, that the volume would increase. Um, the pressure is going to remain constant um, with the volume increase. Well. That idea is what the ideal gas law communicates um, <clears throat> in that you can think about pressure and volume and temperature, so P, V, and T are in here, um, <clears throat> but there's a couple of new characters on the block. Um, there's N and R, and one of those is the number of moles. It happens to be the N. All right, so N stands for number of moles, and R is a gas constant talk about that in a second but the basic gist with the ideal gas law is this is not a um, this isn't a, an equation that's going to allow us to make a prediction about a gas if um, circumstances change or um, conditions change but what it will do is allow us to predict pressure and volume pressure volume or temperature um, given some information about number of moles or perhaps predict something about the number of moles based on um, one of those other things all right so that's the basic gist of that. This gas constant thing, we're going to use a value of 0 0.0821. Um, and that value, that numerical value, works if you are in thinking about pressure in atmospheres, temperature in Kelvin, and volume in liters. So it is absolutely necessary for you to have these units uh, have have information that's going into a problem or calculation in these three units. So if it's not, pressure's not in atmospheres, you need to convert it. Temperature's not in Kelvin, you need to convert it. Volume not in liters, you need to convert that. And then the other thing you need to understand is that if you're solving for one of these three, three things coming out of here, if you're solving for pressure, it's going to be atmospheres. Solving for temperature, it's going to be Kelvin. Solving for volume, it's going to be liters. So you might have to convert after the fact. All right, so the ideal gas law allows us to um, make some predictions about pressure or volume or temperature based on the number of moles or perhaps make a prediction about a number of moles based on the other ones as well. All right, you'll be doing some work with these on paper um, and also we'll probably do a little lab as well. Um, so I hope this was helpful and please track me down if you have questions.